My next guest in Intune was a child prodigy in Australia, so good he was chosen to take part in the great Moscow Tchaikovsky competition, something of an Everest for pianists. The year was 1990. Uh, he never played in the end, but after a gap of nearly 25 years, he's ready. Welcome to Angela Villani. It's very good to have you with us. Thanks, that sounds John. overly dramatic, but I think what happened to you was extraordinarily dramatic. Yes, I guess it's uh, it seems uh, dramatic when you put it that way, but uh, it's uh, something that's probably a bit more common to to sports people, you know, going through the inevitable injuries uh, as they're training for the the big events. But you got this injury on the eve of the competition, and you didn't. Yes, didn't, you didn't play, did you? That's right. I had to pull out uh, just before the beginning of the first round. Um, they were very good to me, the the committee in Moscow, because they. They thought that if they'd send me to the Bolshoi hospital, I'd have some x-rays done and some scans and some treatments. I should be fit enough to to start the uh, uh, first yeah. round just at the end. So they put me at the tail end. So I, I had a, a leeway of about a week and a half. It didn't, it didn't work? No, unfortunately not. So what was it? It was a trap nerve. It sounded a simple enough thing yes. to, to get sorted. It's, it's difficult to say exactly what caused this, but it could have been uh, carrying a heavy school bag or... <sighs> Or something like I used to do karate when I was a teenager, so maybe in the, the jerky movements involved. May I say, Andrew, karate and piano playing don't uh, seem to be the perfect combination. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't realise that at the time. Being a I bit hope you're not, not still doing it, a bit worried no, about the piano. N- I, I love karate <laughs> and Aikido, but uh, no, unfortunately, I can't do it. In these so, days. okay, so you'd, I mean, it was in your obviously in your heart and in your soul and in your mind all these years. Yes. Um, I, I thought, well, initially it was going to be something I could probably cure with a bit of treatment over six months, uh, as sports people do. Uh, but six months turned into about uh, 20 years, so it's been a bit of a long, long trek. That's the understatement. You're obviously a man of a credible determination. What did it in the end? Well, I've got a wonderful specialist in Twickenham who's an osteopath and he's treating me at the moment and uh, and so we've con- uh, achieved considerable uh, progress and I had another specialist that worked uh, with a Chinese uh, methodology mm. for about eight years and he removed a lot of uh, calcified uh, yeah. scar tissue in my back and that seemed to help a great deal. Wow, so. okay, so mentally you were there but what were the fingers like when you tried to get back to... The standard you had. Well, I the thing is, I kept playing throughout those right. years. Uh, Dr. Leslie Howard invited me to play at the List Society annual meeting. Mm. I could play for 15, 20 minutes. So I played some late works, which are not too taxing on the fingers. And, and I did small events like that So over the years. Uh, so I kept my foot in the door, as it were. Um, but it's more um, a battle, a psychological battle, I guess, to... to to get out on stage and to perform yeah. for a, a paying audience. That's a, that's a tough, a t- a tall order. Well, listen, to say. well done, and thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you uh, for having today. me. And you're going to do a very easy little piece first. It's a sort of, <laughs> it's a sort of list transcription of Wagner, but you haven't left it at that. Um, well, actually, the Wagner I pieced together with uh, the help of uh, a transcription by von Bulov, who did the vocal and piano arrangement. And, mm. of course, he conducted uh, the premiere um, and I also used uh, various sources of uh, Karl Talsig's arrangement and Moskovsky, as well as Liszt's own arrangement of Liebestod. So uh, in the end, I didn't use a great deal of the others. I felt that Liszt was closest uh, uh, in spirit uh, with the Liebestod. So I took a, a small chunk of that and put the second act of the love duet as the main material for my paraphrase. OK, well, it's Tristan and Isolde. We know the story. Yes. Sad ending, but turbulence and passion and wonderment in Very between. Very turbulent, so, yes. That's, that's, that's right. enough. So it's the reminiscences of Tristan and Isolde. Yes. Concert paraphrase in Angelo Villani's version. It's the premiere, really, so it's a great pleasure to have you play it. The piano is yours, Angelo. Thank you very much indeed.
Welcome back. <laughs> Andrew Valani playing Wagner with little rangers from Von Bülow, Liszt and himself. Reminiscences of Tristan and his old days. Concert paraphrase. Premiere of that version. Sounded wonderful. Well oh, done. You, you look yes. so confident. Well, it takes a lot out of me, I can tell you that. <sighs> you know, it's interesting because you're wearing white gloves and I know that helps. Yes. Um, this helps to even out... Um, the, the sensation in my right hand in particular. And, of course, I wear the left hand glove to balance out the right, etc. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's not an affectation uh, a la uh, Michael Jackson, but it does actually help. <laughs> so. It's great, but you don't feel any lack of sensitivity, of, of, obviously, th- on, on the keys. Um, well, I do, but I've trained myself to overcome that. It's akin to a, a tightrope walker. Um, if you relax in the right way, then uh, you do feel that sense of balance and penetration into the keys. Mm. Whereas if you if you don't play in the in the right way with the correct sensation, then you're in trouble, basically. So. Wonderful. Well, I think you should write to uh, the Tchaikovsky competition and say, look, I'm all sorted out now. <laughs> Can you just give me a prize? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, yes. Who, who else was in the competition the year you would have been in in 1990? Do you remember? Uh, well, it was Boris Berezovsky that took right. the, the first prize. And uh, there were some good players in, yeah. in that year, so... Well, I mean, you know, you you come back, but obviously people have heard you. Nikola Demijenko said you know, you've got some real passion and really got yes. something to say. Yes, he was very kind. And um, well, no, I think people aren't kind. They're, they're, they they say what they mean. They don't say it if they, if they don't mean it. And you don't get someone of stature saying things if they if they're not impressed. So that's listen. We've been talking so much actually. I want to. There's so much music we want to get in. You're going to play some Alcan now, aren't you? He was yes. A rather eccentric figure, contemporary of Chopin. That's right. I think he was killed by a falling wardrobe. I'm sure that's irrelevant to his state of mind while writing. This. Yes, uh, this particular work is the Barcarolle, which is a, a wonderful piece. It's it's nowhere near as technically demanding as uh, some of the other fiendish works that he mm. composed, the, uh, the symphony, for instance, for solo piano, the concerto yeah. solo piano. This is a, a more lyric work, and it only takes about four minutes, and it's uh, very lilting, at the, hence the title yeah. Barcarolle. Lovely. Well, I think you're allowed to have a little gentle pianistic um, <laughs> performance after the dazzle of the Wagner. Um, Angelo Villani live in the studio with the Barcarolle, G Manor at 65 by Charles Valentin Alcon.
Thank you, Angela, very much indeed. The Buckerel in G minor, number 65, by Alcan, played by Angela Villani in, in the studio. I mean, you're going to play Chopin for us to finish in a moment. Do you make comparisons with the two of them, very, very much inhabiting the same time in Paris and, in a way, the same sound world? Yeah, very much so. Uh, they were very close friends. In fact, uh, I only discovered recently that uh, um, I think partly the reason why Alcan stopped performing after 1850 was because of the death of Chopin. He, he really loved Chopin and he, he fell into a, a bit of a depression and uh, he became a, a recluse, so mm. he didn't play for mm. about 25 years. Well, uh, well, that's why you're attracted <laughs> to him. Not that you become reclusive. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, no. no but uh, I think they were great friends. They had a lot of respect for each other. And uh, very similar in many ways. Uh, the, the very song-like character yeah. comes out in both their music. So. Well, uh, you know, if you had so much time to think about making a, a proper international comeback, did you always know you would do it? Well, no. There were some dark moments, obviously, where I thought, well, I'm probably never going to play the piano again. Um, but then I thought, well, there's little else that I can do <laughs> that, I, that I love. Uh, so I thought I may as well stick with it. And uh, here I am. Well, it's uh, you're you're a shining beacon to all of us. <laughs> it's wonderful <laughs> to have you with us. And it's St John's Square Square this Wednesday, isn't it? That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There've been a few problems with their website uh, for booking tickets. Uh, some colleagues and friends of mine have, uh, have uh, mentioned that. So just turn up to uh, to either turn up and buy at the box office or to call uh, by the phones. Yes, old-fashioned method. You remember yes, those things exactly. called telephones? Exactly. Nobody uses them anymore. But anyway, see, once all these modern things go down, you've got to rely on the old-fashioned things. No pigeons or parchment, please. Uh, Angela, you're going to play just uh, before the news, I think, one of the Chopin Nocturne. He's making his way back to the piano. It's that one, indeed. Nocturne uh, E-flat major, opus 9, number 2.
Angela, thank you very much indeed. As you would say, letting the music speak. Nocturne in E-flat major, was 9, number 2 by Chopin. Angelo Villani, live in the studio, and he plays at St John Smith Square on this coming Wednesday. Music by Debussy, Chopin, um, Wagner. A little bit of assistance for himself. Olkan and Liszt, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Time has just gone a minute past 6 o'clock. The BBC News now with Katrina Young.